Then this next thing, we're gonna use the bar scale on your computer down here. So, so once you have your map, uh, don't shrink it or, or make it larger. Just keep it at the scale you're using. And you wanna use a ruler. Take a physical ruler and place it here and see how many, um, I think I want you to go from zero to 7,000. See how many inches are covered between zero and 7,000 with your ruler. So put it right up against your screen and figure that out. So let's say I measured on my map that distance to be 1.4 inches between zero and 7,000 feet. 1.4 inches, it, so this could be a verbal scale. 1.4 inches is 7,000 feet. However, that doesn't really help me very much. I need to take those 1.4 inches and make it into where one inch equals some distance like I do here. So what you wanna do, you wanna divide both sides by 1.4 inches. And when I do this, I get one inch equals 5,000 feet. So now I have a, a verbal scale on the map. So with my ruler, or what I want you to do is, is taking that verbal scale that you calculate, whatever it's gonna be, because it's not gonna be 5,000 feet, it's gonna be something different. I want you to measure the distance with your ruler um, between Huckleberry Swamp and Cobb Hill. And then, so let's say you, between Huckleberry Swamp and Cobb Hill, which is, um, which is up here, right? So measure that distance, see how many inches. If you get, let's say you get uh, five inches, then you would take five times whatever that number you got here. Obviously, you're not gonna get 5,000 feet, you're gonna get something different. And that'll give you the distance for question 36. And then you'll do the same thing for um, uh, the distance between Prospect Hill uh, in Palmyra City to school num number 13, which is down at Port Gips Gibson. And Port Gibson is down here in the south here. So there's school 13 right there. And then Prospect Hill or Peak is up here. So anyways, uh, that's what I want you to do for that section there. Now looking at contour lines, so I talked a little bit about this. I want you to look at the Palmyra, Palmyra map, especially this Walton Hill. Here's Walton Hill. Note that the contour lines kind of loop around. So obviously this is some, this, this some sort of hill, right? It has some topography, it's pretty steep. And based on the steepness here, is it steeper on, uh, or the, the proximity of the contour lines, is it steeper on the east side or the west side? So your job is trying to figure out, or on the north side or the south side, right? So I can tell that since they're widely spaced here, it's gonna be a more gentle slope right here. And it looks like it's a little bit steeper over here. So those are some questions you'll, you'll deal with uh, with Walton Hill and some other things. Here I talk about benchmarks. Now you know a little bit about those. There's some rules for contouring. So make sure you read through these. Um, although I did place a, um, a little picture here with some rules of, so kind of read through this to understand what these rules for contouring are. Especially when we look at this rule of V. I, I ask quite a bit, I have some questions about the rule of V. So know about this and know about these hatchers and how they represent depressions, depression contours. All right, so then you'll just answer the questions that we go through here. It looks like there are questions on the Clark Fork Quadrangle. Yeah, so kind of keep looking through these. This is all on Clark Fork. And then again, depression contours, this talks a little bit more about them. One important thing I wanna point out about depression contours, uh, especially because one of the problems we have deals with this and that comes up later on, it's especially when you're going up a slope, you're going up here. Note that as I'm going up the hill, I have, I'm at 280 feet, and I'm at 290, then I'm at 300. Then I'm gonna go a little bit above 300, then I'm gonna drop into this hole. So I, I have to cross that 300 foot contour line again. And when I cross it, since I'm going down, note that it has hatchers. Then if I go another 10 feet down, I, I hit the 290. So that's why it's showing these it, with these hatchers. So as you're going uphill, note that at the first depression contour is gonna be the same elevation as the preceding lower elevation. Don't forget that, that's gonna come up later on. The first depression contour is gonna be the same elevation as a preceding lower elevation contour. If you understand that, you'll get that problem. Well, you'll get that problem correct. All right, and that's actually this problem uh, 48. So when you're looking at uh, problem 148, there's two things that I want you to think about, and that's this map down at the bottom over here. And here it is for problem 148. And I kind of repeat the question here just so you can have it here in the in the answer key. Is note that there's a there's a stream. Here's a stream. Now you're is a stream moving toward the south 
east or is it moving toward the northwest? And the way to figure that out is by using that rule of V for contralines. So go back over here to this rule of V right here. And so note that, the, that when a contraline crosses a stream, there's a characteristic V that forms. See that V? And the V always points in the uphill direction. So that's a clue there. So because you're gonna be asked to determine whether uh, the highest elevations are over here or the highest elevations over, over here. So, and then note that they do give you a benchmark and they do give you one contour elevation over here, right? So you have that to work with. And here the contour interval is uh, 20 feet. It tells you 20 feet. So either this next contour, so you want to label the elevation of each contour. So either this contour will be 740 or it'll be 700, depending on what you say for the rule of Vs, right? And so again, uh, understand that. And then once you figure out which way is up and which way is down, note that we have some depression contours. So the elevation of this one will be the same as, a, as the next lower elevation contour, right? So keep that in mind when you're doing this problem 48. Then for problems 49 through 58, again, we're looking at just different features on, on either the Palmyra map or the Clark Fork quadrangle. So kind of go through those. For part D, this is an important one, and this is why I want you to print this lab, because uh, you're going to make a, a contoured topographic map. So the first thing I want you to do is to label the elevations of all these points and, and use you know, interpolation, extrapolation, try to figure out. For example, if these are all around 300, uh, th then these two are probably 400, and these are probably 500 in here, right? So write the elevation of those points in these, these areas that don't have elevation, right? So if that's 200, that's probably 300 right there. That's probably 200, 200, 200. So anyways, so these are probably all 200 elevation contours. Um, an important thing though, when you're, when you're doing your rule of these, and I don't know if it's gonna work with, um, when you're drawing your line, for example, if, if I start drawing the 200 foot contour here, Note that I'm only hitting the 200 feet, but then I'll make a rule of V right there. See that? So you want to show something like that. And then it's going to come through here, 200, these are all 200, and make a rule of V, and then have this come down like this. Because that's what the rule of Vs are telling us, that they are always point toward the uphill direction. And so, uh, just and basically you're modeling your contour based on this preceding contour. Now for the 300 foot one, it's going to be sort of the same thing. You're going to come through here. You're going to hit a, a rule of V there. Come down here. Do a rule of V right there, and come off here. And then you're probably um, you're probably going off the page over there somehow. And then you'll do the 400 foot one, the 500 foot one, the 600 foot one. And it looks like the 600 kind of loops around. Maybe even the 500 loops around. So there's a hilltop up here. Work on that. This is an important one. So you'll have to submit this and. I guess you can do it on the computer too if, you, if you're not going to print this, but I would like you to print this lab. For question 60, you have sea level over here. We know sea level is at zero feet elevation, right? And so from sea level, you, you want to make do a contour interval of 10 feet. So that's zero, 10, 20, 30. Now you got to remember your rule for depression contours. Remember, this will be the same elevation as the next lowest elevation, right? So you make sure you label these correctly and then work your way to label all these points up here, each 10 feet of a contour interval here. Finally, the last bit you'll be doing on this lab is constructing a profile. And I kind of go through some, you know, explanation down here at the bottom of how to do it. And you can do it with a piece of paper. You place a piece of paper on the line of section. You, wherever a contour line crosses that line of section, you record that elevation. Now you can take your piece of paper and put it up by your graph paper, uh, put an appropriate scale on there, and then draw your elevation profile, right? So that's a, a, a topographic profile. But this exercise, they actually make it easy for us. They, they already have the graph paper lined up. So what I want you to do, here's our line section A to A prime. Uh, so again, wherever a contour line crosses that line of section, I'm going to record the height or the elevation on this, on this uh, graph paper. So what I want you to do is for, for, the, um, for the scale, make the bottom 600 feet. So that's going to be 600 feet, which means 
This next one up here will be 700 feet, and this one will be 800 feet. All right, so now with those numbers, you can map these elevations. So it'll probably help for you to actually write the elevation contours here. So uh, you'd have to kind of figure out this. So let's see what we have here. It doesn't give you a, a, contour, a contour interval, so you're going to have to figure it out. So if you're at 700, you're at 800, you're going to go one step, two step, three steps, four steps. Oh, so it's 20 foot. It does tell you 20 foot contour there. So 100 divided by five, it gives you 20 feet. So that means if that's 800, then you need to figure out what the elevations of these are. And then whatever elevation this is, you want to label it. So this should be uh, maybe seven. Uh, so that's 780, 60, 40. This, so this is 740. So you would go, remember each of these boxes is now 10 feet. So you'd put a dot right here at 10, 20, 30, 40, right there. So you put a little mark there, and then that would be your first, first point. Then this is 760, so right in here, so there's a 50, 60, you put a dot right there. And then you do the next one, which is 780, which is pretty close right here, there's 780 right there. And then you don't quite get to 800, but you hit 780 again over here. All right, so 780 again right here. And so once you get all the points in here, you're going to draw your, your profile. You're, you'll kind of sketch it in, uh, sort of like they, they done here. They connected all the dots here. Uh, be careful with the stream. When you draw these streams, make sure you show that little, uh, so the stream's going to be somewhere in here. Make sure you show the little valley, right? Make sure it's a valley when you're drawing that stream in here, right? And obviously the hilltops are going to be, or these ridges here are going to be more rounded. So you're going to show the little V's for the valleys, right? Because that's what valleys look like. All right, so that's a little bit about the profile. And then um, and that's it. So again, this is the only lab we have for this week. I moved the, the geologic, geologic structures lab to next week. But during lecture, I'm going to work on some of the, the tutorials I have in the lab book. And also, uh, I put a geode Google Earth. I think it's a Google Earth exercise I want to do together. Uh, on Wednesday, so I'll send some some notes out for you guys Wednesday or or Tuesday or Thursday, whenever. We'll we'll set something up for everybody here. Okay, well, bye for now.